Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for what you are going to do in this program. Lord, all we are asking, O oh God, that you come and take absolute control. As we hear your word, we pray, Lord, transform us. Make us that you want us to be. And make us rapturable saints in Jesus' name. I pray the God of my pastor, the God of the choosing. I pray, Lord, possess me. And use me mightily to your glory in Jesus' name. I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Shall we open our Bible to the book of Psalm 95? Verse 7. And I read verse 7. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his hand. Today if you will hear his voice. Harden not your heart. As in the day. As in the provocation. And as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my walk, forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. If you go to the book of Proverbs 29, verse 1. And I read verse 1 of Proverbs 29. He that being often reproved hardened his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy in second corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 second corinthians Chapter 6, reading verse 2. For he said, I have had thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have so called thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So, from this chapter, some verses. Of the Bible we are taking our topic which is repent now take it again repent now many people are playing with their souls as a result of the things of this temporary life and even when the Lord has done everything for them, he suffered for all and died for all and paid the price of our sins with his precious blood at the cross of Calvary. I have given us the grace to know him hear his word and he warned them severally 
but they have refused to repent. And if you are among such people, the question is, what will be your excuse? If you drop your body now or leave this world, what will be your excuse? And so the Lord is saying, repent now. Don't wait. Don't procrastinate. As the word of God is coming. Do not be among them that will harden your heart to death. That will become adamant as this word is coming forth. That will feel unconsigned. That will feel uninterested. If you look at the book of Psalm chapter 95, verse 7. Psalm 95. I read verse 7. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his, of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Look at verse 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel, kneel before the Lord, our maker. So, the point is, do not harden your heart as you hear this war. Because those that did it in time past were destroyed. The Bible took an oath, the Lord took an oath and said that these people who have hardened their hearts to his war who have hardened their heart, that they will not enter into his rest. And so, as we are hearing this word, this moment, do not harden your heart. As I said, God will not spare such people on the judgment day. If you look at Hebrew chapter 9, verse 27, in Hebrew, Chapter 9, I read verse 27. And it's and as it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. And so we must take our stand now. We must not wait till tomorrow. Because if you fail to do it now, if you fail to repent now and die in your sins or the rapture takes place, I want to let you know the opportunity will never be given to us again. So do it now. Praise the Lord. In Psalm chapter 9 verse 17, Psalm 9, I read verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. The point is, anybody who is a sinner, before God, such person is a wicked person. And no matter how many, no matter the uh, number of those that are doing evil, before God, if they refuse to repent, the Bible says they will turn into where? 
they will be turning to hell. I said, well, let no one be deceived by saying, does it mean that all the multitude out there or in some part of the world or anywhere that is not living right, when they die, they will go to hell? I want to let you know the answer to it is Psalm chapter 9, verse 17. And the Bible says to us, the wicked and them that forget God shall be what? Shall be thrown into hell. And so do not forget that after death, there shall be no more grace to be saved. So repent now. Praise the Lord. So we are going to look at this message under the following subheadings. Point one, the necessity of salvation now an unfortunate situation. Point two, our expected response and the results. So we are looking at the first point, the necessity of salvation now and the unfortunate situation. So everyone should understand that the salvation of our soul is necessary, very necessary now. Because after this one life, there shall be no more grace to be saved, whether by rapture or by any other means. It is now, and the reason being that the grace to be saved does not extend after the rapture or death. So I want to let you know that if anyone refuses to do it now, if anyone refuses to be saved now, that the grace, now that we have the grace, my dear friends, I want you to know that when the rapture takes place, it will be difficult under the torture of the Antichrist. In fact, I use the word, it will be impossible. And that is why if you look at Hebrew chapter 9, verse 27, and Hebrew chapter 9, verse 27, and I read verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So, if anyone fail to do it now, that the grace is at work, I want to let you know that if such person dies or the rapture takes place, it will then become impossible to do it then. So now that the grace is at work, I want every one of us to know that now that the grace that bringeth salvation unto all men, that teach us to deny ungodly, ungodliness, that teach us to deny, you know, worldly lust has appeared. I want to let you know we must take advantage of that grace. Now that we have the grace that can bring transformation, that can make one to depart from his former lifestyle and begin to live a life that pleases God, we must do it now. If you look at the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11, Titus chapter 2 and I read verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So you can see, now that the grace is at work, now that we have the grace that can bring transformation, that can transform one, and that one can, for, you know, forsake his former lifestyle and begin to live a life that pleases God, then every one of us must ensure we take advantage of this grace. Because when the grace will cease to work, no one can be saved by it. So, it is now. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And I read verse 2. For he said, I have had thee in an accepted time, in a time accepted. In the day of salvation, I have succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So, the point is that now is the accepted time. A time is coming when repentance will no longer be accepted. And so now that we have the grace, now that the grace is at work, then we must do it now. We must repent now. And after the rapture, that grace will cease to work. And if any man will be saved, it must be that such a person can only be saved by his or her own, or her own blood which is impossible. So, I want to let you know, as I said to us before, if we refuse to take advantage of now that we have the grace, it will be impossible when the grace is no longer at work. Now, let me explain to you something. If, during, in the time of the Antichrist, during the torture of the Antichrist, when the saints have been taken away, it will be difficult. It will be difficult for anyone to be saved at that period. And so, God has given us this opportunity to take advantage of this grace he has given to us. If you look at the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So, God has made it possible for us now through Jesus Christ our Lord. He has made it possible for us that if anyone take advantage of the grace and repent now, such person will be saved. Such person's life will be transformed. So do it when? Do it now. In John chapter 15, verse 5. And I read verse 5. For I am divine, and ye are the branches. And he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So, without Christ, it will be difficult to be saved. 
So we must do it now that we have the grace. So we all should endeavor to receive salvation in full and free of charge now. So it is now or never, as the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, it's appointed to a man to die once, and after then comes what? The judgment. And those who do not know this fact are taking a great risk if they die without being saved. If they die or if the rapture comes without being saved. Those who, are, who know this truth and are still procrastinating and are still saying tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I want to let you know that such people it is very, very dangerous if they die in that state. Because when that happens, such person cannot see the kingdom of God. Such people will be cast to hell fire. But I pray that everyone that is hearing this word this afternoon, this moment, will repent now. Can I hear you say amen? amen. So, the unfortunate situation is that many are victims who do not bother to be saved. Rather, they are increasing in iniquity. They are increasing in pride. They are increasing in arrogancy. They are increasing in fornication. They are increasing in covetousness. They are increasing in adultery. They are increasing in masturbation. In all wickedness. And backsliding. And have hardened their hearts to destruction. If you look at the book of Psalm 95 verse 7. So many... Who know this truth, who have heard of this truth, have continued to remain adamant, have continued to become, you know, not interested. Look at the book of Psalms, chapter 95, I read verse 7. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. As in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my walk, 40 years long, was I grieved with this generation? And said, it is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The point is, the Lord is saying that nobody should follow this way. Of those that hardened their heart when the word came. Because... Those that did it ended up in destruction. And so, as you are hearing this war, let no one harden their hearts. Let no one become adamant. Because doing so will be terrible. Praise the Lord. So, now, it is now, whatever. If you are taking the decision to repent, we must do it now. And that is why in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, and I read verse 2. For he said, I have had thee in a time accepted. In a day of salvation, I have succored thee. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So the point is, now, it is now, it is now to take that decision. No, we should not procrastinate. We should repent now. And so, I go to our second point. 
our expected response and the result. Everyone should take advantage of this grace now and be born again or repent of their sins. No matter what one has in this life, those things are temporary and shall be vanished away. Remember, the Bible made us understand that none of us came into this world with anything. And it says that nobody is going out of this world with anything. And so we must not allow the things of this world to deceive us. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And I read verse 29. For this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world passes away. So the point is that the time is short. And because of that, the Bible made us understand that no matter whatever you are enjoying or buying or you have, you must not allow those things to, you know, you must not allow those things to shift your heart, your mind from the real joy that is coming. And if you are into one sorrow or the other, you must not be allow that sorrow, you must not be consumed by that sorrow. No matter whatever be the challenges, I want to let you know, my dear friends, no matter whatever be the challenges, we must not allow it to take us out of the way. Praise the Lord. Knowing that, the Bible made us understand that the time is what? Short. And he made it clear to all. He says, the fashion of the world, do, do what? They pass away. And so, every one of us must turn our back to every earthly glory which we met here and shall leave it here. The point is that we must not allow those things to deceive us because nobody that have those things, whenever he or she is going, nobody goes with those things. Even the, even the body, even the body that the person is carrying, the person will not go with his body when he's going back. If you look at 2 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 6. And I read 1 Timothy rather, chapter 6, verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. So, you can see that nobody, no matter whatever the person acquire in this world, the degrees, the money, the building, whatsoever, the Bible says it is certain that nobody is going back with those things. No matter. So, we must do it now like the apostles. You know, the apostles did not allow those things to deceive them. They were very wise. And if you look at the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 28, you will see the confession, you will see what they said in Mark chapter 10 verse 28. Mark chapter 10, and I read verse 28. 
Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all, and we have followed thee. So, the apostles were very wise. They knew that the things of this world put together cannot save a soul. And while they were here on earth, the confession is that they have left everything and followed Christ. Because they know that, as I said before, everything put together, all the things of this world put together, cannot be exchanged with our soul, cannot be compared with our soul. And so they forsook those things and followed Christ. And so we should heed to the counsel of the Lord. We should heed to the counsel of the Lord. If you look at Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Matthew chapter 6. And I read verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So, all I want us to know that as we surrender our life to Jesus, as we become born again and begin to live the lifestyle of the kingdom, everything we are looking for shall be given to us. Whether you want to become whatever, spiritually, financially, materially, everything will be given to us. And no wonder the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, it says, For my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So as we begin, as we surrender our life to Jesus, and begin to do his will and begin to serve him, oh, I want to let you know, my friend, we will never lack anything. All our needs shall be supplied to us. We shall have, go, in fact, we shall abound in the glory of God and go on from glory to what? Glory. Praise the Lord. So, let's take note that it is now or never. We must repent now. We must not allow anything to take us away or take away what we have because it is greater than all. We must not allow anything, the things of this world, to, you know, to, to make us lose the main thing, which is the salvation of our soul. If you look at the book of um, Mark chapter 8 verse 36, Mark chapter 8 verse 36. But what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So you can see the Lord is making us understand the whole world, the things of this world, the whole money, everything put together cannot be compared or cannot be used to exchange our soul. And so the Lord is making us understand that every one of us we must repent now for tomorrow may be too late. We must do it now. I want to let you know my dear friends if you go out there, even to the mortuary, you will see that there are, there are some corpses they are bearing even today. And some of them, at some point in time, might be saying, oh, they want to have the things of this world before they are saved. But that opportun opportunity was not given to them. And the Bible also warned us he also made us understand. He says, we should, as we hear this word, we must not harden our heart. We must not harden our heart and continue to do evil. 
and continue in unrighteousness because the Bible made us understand. It says those that did it in time past, God took an oath. God said they will never enter his rest. And so nobody should follow that example and then begin to procrastinate and begin, uh, you know, and saying, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow. And God will not be happy with such person. And so every one of us must do it now. Now, because now is an appointed time. Now is the day of what? Salvation. Now we have the grace. Now the rapture has not taken place. Now that the grace is at work, my brothers and sisters, we must repent now. We must do it now. Because those who rejected the warning in time past, as I said before, in time past, perished. Most people who did it in time past, many of them were destroyed. If you look at uh, the book of Psalm chapter 95, verse 5 again. Shall we look at it again? Psalm 95, verse 5. The sea is his. And he made it. And his hands from the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his hands. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. As in the day, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. So, you can see, the, uh, you know, the correction is that nobody should follow their examples. Nobody should harden their heart. Nobody should be continue to remain adamant as to hear this message. Nobody should pro keep on procrastinating. Nobody should say, oh, until I have this and have this and have this, we should take, do it now. We should decide now. Because tomorrow might be too late. If you look at the book of First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I read verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And so anyone that is into this kind of lifestyle and continue in that life, that kind of lifestyle and die in it, such person cannot see the kingdom of God. And so the Lord is making every one of us to understand we must repent now. We must not wait and then begin to give excuses. If you look at Matthew chapter 25, verse 46. Matthew 25, verse 46. And this shall go away into go away into everlasting punishment but a righteous into life and eternal. so as many that will do it now as many that will repent now when the rapture of the saints shall come they will go with the, they will go with the saints as many that will continue to delay and continue to procrastinate once they you know they drop their body and die, after then will come judgment. 
the opportunity to be saved, to repent, will not be given to them anymore. Because the Bible says, it's appointed to man to die once, and then comes what? The judgment. And so, and those who will believe and give their life to our Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved, and they shall inherit the kingdom of God. If you look at the same Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, then said the king unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So the point is, as many that will repent now, that will surrender their life to Jesus, that will make him their Lord and personal Savior, and continue with the Lord, when the Lord shall come, the Lord will take them to a place of rest. Can I hear the church say amen? amen? And I pray that every one of us that have had this word, this moment, I pray that we all shall decide now. Repent now. So that when the Lord shall come, we all shall go on to be with the Lord. Can I hear the church say amen? amen. Now I want you to bow your head down. Bow your head now and begin to pray in this message. Ask the Lord, Lord help me. Pray, tell the Lord, no more unrighteousness, no more wickedness. Begin to pray to the Lord. Pray in the message. Pray in the message. Talk to the Lord. Pray. Pray 